Hi, I'm Louis Chesler. I am a pediatric oncologist um, and a scientist at the Institute of Cancer Research in the Royal Marsden Hospital in the United Kingdom. The title of the paper that we published in Oncotarget recently is Inhibition of mTOR Kinase Destabilizes McN and is a Potential Therapy for MIC Dependent Tumors. Um, and so we focus on uh, delivering safer and more effective targeted cancer therapies to pediatric patients with difficult to cure solid tumors such as neuroblastoma. Neuroblastoma is one of the most common pediatric solid tumors um, that occurs outside the brain uh, and in about 35 percent of patients with very aggressive disease um, the the tumor is driven by overexpression or amplification of the NMIC oncogene. And MIC genes, of course, are transcription factors. Uh, they induce dependence um, when apparently expressed in a variety of adult as well as pediatric tumors. And we have been fascinated with um, and obsessed with targeting NMIC, um, specifically in neuroblastoma and other tumors such as medulloblastoma, a brain tumor, and rhabdomyosarcoma, a muscle tumor in children for many years. What we describe in the current paper um, is that uh, NMIC can be efficiently degraded by a class of drugs called mTOR inhibitors. Many of these now are reaching uh, clinical use in children. And the mechanism of action that we studied uh, has to do with the N-terminus of of, of NMIC. Uh, as uh, you know, MIC proteins have been incredibly difficult to target. There are no practically usable therapeutics in clinical trials yet. What we and others identified is a conserved domain in the N-terminus of NMIC, uh, which is phosphorylated in a very specific manner. And uh, what we study in this paper is the ability of mTOR inhibitors to alter the phosphorylation of that uh, N terminal MIC box 1. And what that does is stimulate uh, proteasomal degradation of NMIC. Uh, so, what we did was a drug screen to identify those compounds most able to destabilize MIC. And to do that, we set up isogenic cell panels of uh, MIC dependent or non dependent cells, which expressed forms of NMIC either unmutated or mutated at MIC box 1. And prominent hits in that screen, of course, were mTOR inhibitors. Uh, we show in the paper that the mechanism of destabilization of NMIC has to do with altered phosphorylation at the N-terminus of NMIC. And then we go on in a series of in vivo trials using uh, an NMIC-dependent neuroblastoma transgenic mouse model in which NMIC is selectively expressed in the neural crest. We go on to show that uh, treatment with mTOR inhibitors is very effective and extends the survival of those NMIC-dependent neuroblastomas in a native um, in vivo tumor model. The result, to me as a pediatric oncologist, and I hope to other pediatric oncologists, are very significant because um, mTOR inhibitors, while they have been in clinical use in adult cancers for many years, are now only just entering use in clinical trials in children. And because several of these compounds are available, uh, it's, a, it's, it's important that uh, we select the right compound for clinical use. And what the paper outlines is that um, really the most, infective, the, the most effective mTOR inhibitors are complete allosteric inhibitors of mTOR complex. We discovered that PI3 kinase inhibitors that lack significant um, blockade of the mTOR complex are really not effective against neuroblastomas and particularly not effective when NMIC is expressed. So the results are clinically important, we think, because um, uh, the potential is that uh, if one treated an NMIC-dependent tumor um, in a patient uh, with the wrong PI3K or uh, mTOR inhibitor, that that uh, could actually be clinically detrimental. So we hope these results are informative to patients. I'd like to thank the senior author of that paper, Lindsay Vaughan, a, a wonderful postdoc um, who produced most of the work, and also the patients um, and families uh, 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 and children who have this devastating disease. Thank you.